Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Just as God's work of creation never ends, so the gifts received in baptism are renewed every day. Let us give thanks together for the life given in baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of life, for water to bathe in, water to drink, for waters to play in, and waters that inspire wonder, for water that gives life to our planet. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of this place, for water from our tap, for rain, and for Antietam Creek. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of this place. We give you thanks for your salvation through water, for delivering Noah and his family through the flood waters, for leading your people Israel through the sea into freedom, for preserving your prophet Elijah through the time of drought for guiding your people across the Jordan into a new land, for quenching the Samaritan woman's thirst with living water. We give you thanks for your salvation in the waters. We give you thanks for the life of all the baptized and for all who gather here, for godparents and baptismal sponsors, for children and grandchildren, for our brothers and sisters in Christ whom we have never seen, but to whom we are bound. We give you thanks for the life of all baptized. We give you thanks for life in Christ through your Holy Spirit, for our entry into Jesus' death through these waters, for our new birth into a life of freedom and service, for our calling to be your people sent out for the life of the world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit 
be with you all. Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Cephas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they made the prisoners, Peter and John, stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, If we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Word of God, word of life. A reading from 1 John. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and 
and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise I'd like to invite the children to come up for a special song with Deaconess Deborah. Morning, morning, everybody. So, I have a question for the kids before we start. If somebody told you, hey, let's go and play in the street, would you follow them? I hope not. No, no, I wouldn't do that. Come on over here. Let's go to the middle. And if somebody said, ooh, let's go to the store and steal some candy bars, no? No, I wouldn't do that either. So that's the kind of leader you don't want to follow. Today we celebrate Jesus as the good shepherd, as somebody you do want to follow. So do this with me. Go ba, 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 ba. And we're going to invite everybody out there to do this with us, OK? It goes like this, ba, 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 ba. Because today is Good Shepherd Sunday, we are remembering who we follow, OK? And if you know the song, sing along with us. Ready? Grace, get your ears ready. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I don't want to be a goat, nope. I don't want to be a goat, nope. Because a goat ain't got no hope, nope. I don't want to be a goat. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I don't want to be a Pharisee. I don't want to be a Pharisee. Because they're not fair, you see. 
I don't want to be a Pharisee. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba ba. You can sing with me. I don't want to be a Sadducee. I don't want to be a Sadducee. Because they're so Sadducee. Oh, I don't want to be a Sadducee. So what do you want to be? I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep. One more, ready? I don't want to be from Babylon. I don't want to be from Babylon. Because they babble on and 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 on. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba ba. Thank you very much. Remember to follow Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And you can watch your feet. And you do have sandals. They're gorgeous. Thank you. Hard act to follow. <laughs> Each year, this fourth Sunday of Easter is celebrated as Good Shepherd Sunday. Our readings today take up that rich imagery of sheep and shepherds, reminding us that God is like a good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep and who tenderly leads us through all the possibilities and perils of life. I'm happy that our children just sang, I just want to be a sheep this morning and that you all participated so nicely because it reminds me of my own childhood and, my, and the notions that I had of sheep. When I was a little boy, I thought that the good news in these passages was that I was like a sheep. I couldn't have been more than four or five years old when I learned the words to one of my favorite childhood hymns. I'd sit next to my mother at the piano and we'd sing, I am Jesus, little lamb, ever glad at heart I am. What a nice image for a little boy to carry in his heart. I was Jesus, little lamb, lovingly cared for by God in the same way my mother cared for me. At that point in my life, all I knew about sheep is that they were cute and fluffy. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. Baba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. I had stuffed sheep in my toy box. I watched Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop on television. <laughs> and my baby sister had lambs on her jammies. Even the picture in our church of Jesus with his sheep was cute and fluffy. The Savior wore pastel robes and cradled his lamb like a baby. All those images made me think that it was good news to be like a sheep. Sheep always followed. They did what they were told. They had no problems. And they were cute. Cute and fluffy. I just want to be a sheep. What could be better? But as I grew older, I started learning more about sheep and about myself. I found out that sheep can be dirty, smelly, and stubborn. I realized that they're raised to be fleeced for their wool and butchered for their meat. And I found out that my own sheep-like qualities weren't particularly good news either. I knew how to follow like a sheep, but that usually meant going along with the crowd, whether the crowd was right or wrong. I knew how to obey like a sheep, but I was still learning to form my own independent moral decisions. And when a third-grade friend tragically lost his life in a train accident, I learned that not even Jesus' little lambs are immune from grief. Our children's choir sang, I am Jesus, little lamb, through our tears at Billy's funeral. As I learned more about sheep, about life, and about myself, 
I came to realize that being a sheep isn't the good news in these passages at all. It's the problem. The Bible says that all we like sheep have gone astray. It tells us that we're the target of wolves and other deadly enemies. It reminds us that our destiny is death. And it never says anything about being cute and fluffy. The fact that we're like sheep isn't meant to be good news. In fact, it ought to make us squirm, even as adults. We're led around by politicians who promise they can lead us to greener pastures. We're fleeced by marketing techniques that lead us down the path of materialism. We encounter sickness, sorrow, and danger every day, and we often feel as helpless as lambs. We're like sheep, all right. But when you cut through the sentimentality, you realize that there's nothing so great about being a sheep. No, the good news of our lessons is not our sheepishness. It's our shepherd. The good news, the gospel, is that we sheep finally have a shepherd who really cares about us. The Lord is a shepherd who looks out for your well-being. He's not out to fleece you or use you. He won't try to manipulate you. He doesn't see you as one more lamb to be slaughtered. The Israelites who first sang the 23rd Psalm together knew that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. They'd had enough empty promises that had cost them their skin. They didn't sing Psalm 23 sentimentally. They sang it defiantly. In the face of every power that tried to use them, abuse them, or lead them astray, they sang, the Lord is my shepherd. That's the good news, that we sheep finally have a shepherd who loves us as his own. And Jesus loves us not just as sheep, but as his own dear children. He calls us not to use us, but to lead us to abundant and eternal life. My sheep hear my voice, he says, and I know them, and they follow me. As we live with our shepherd, we learn to recognize his voice and to trust his care and guidance. Sometimes that's not easy. We can still be stubborn. We can still be misled. We can still be overwhelmed by the problems of life. But Jesus promises that no one and nothing can snatch us out of his hand. He knows you by name. He recognizes your voice. And he lays down his life for you. The good news is that Jesus is your good shepherd. And the miracle is that as you follow him, you'll become less and less like a sheep and more and more like the shepherd himself. In his care, you'll be freed from the need to follow the crowd. Instead, you'll be able to guide others in the paths of life and wholeness. Hearing his voice, you'll be able to resist the pressures to conform to this world. Instead, you'll be free to work for change when things aren't right. It can be hard to follow Jesus and to do the work he does. Sometimes it's much easier to be a sheep. But because of Jesus, you are no longer bound by your weakness. You are no longer just a sheep. You're called to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick, and care for the poor. You're called to speak the truth, whenever you encounter falsehood and injustice. You're called to fight against all the forces that threaten to make people less than human. You're called to forgive sins, to proclaim hope, and to love one another as Christ has loved you, 
even to the point of laying down your life. Cute and fluffy just won't do it. You'll need to be courageous. You'll need to be loving. You'll need to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But as you do, you'll find yourself being transformed each day into the likeness of your good shepherd as he leads you into abundant and everlasting life. Amen. Confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, truth from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray for the witness of the church, the wholeness of creation, and all who are in need. Bless all who shepherd your sheep and guide them in their serving. We pray for church custodians and our sexton Dave, office workers, especially Diane, Rachel, and Karen, Matt and Me Media Ministries, Karen and all musicians who faithfully serve Trinity, Sunday school teachers, confirmation leaders, baptismal sponsors, 
Deaconess Deborah and all deacons, Pastor Allen and all pastors, youth workers and bishops, especially your servants, Sam and Elizabeth. We pray for our covenant congregation, Christ Episcopal Church, and for Father John, for Holy Spirit Lutheran and Pastor Rob, for United Lutheran Seminary, for Trinity Deaf and D, and for Common Ground and Pastor Tom. Lord, in your mercy, Restore natural environments damaged by human hands. We pray for river valleys and grassy plains, coral reefs and Arctic ice, mountains, deserts, and marshlands. Lord, in your mercy, protect and guide first responders. Bring mercy and justice with their presence. We pray for military personnel, firefighters, paramedics, and police officers, and for disaster relief and crisis intervention teams. Lord, in your mercy, heal and renew all who ache for a better tomorrow. We pray for the unemployed and underemployed for the forgotten, the nameless, and the outcasts, for our enemies and for our loved ones, and for members of our church family, especially Bob, Tom and Amy, Elton and Ann, Russ, and John and Pat. Lord, in your mercy, Give to all who are restless, reckless, or uncertain the peace you promise that is deeper and richer than anything we can imagine. We pray for all who live with chronic pain, who live with anxiety, who are ill or hospitalized, especially Guy, Bob, Jay, Karen, Marie, Carl and Betty, Tom, Walter, Joan, Barb, Ed, Carl, Jacob, and Steve. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. nourish us with the testimony of all the disciples who have gone before us. We give thanks for the faithful departed and their witness in every age. Lord, in your mercy. We entrust all our prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them by the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Um, 4 o'clock this afternoon, Lars Potiger in concert, jazz piano, right here. There will be a screen to see him. He'll be playing on the piano upstairs, so if you want to sit close to him, you can sit up there as well. It will be a wonderful concert. Invite your family and friends to join us. Next week is Music Ministry Sunday. We will have a, um, a great feast of music at this 11 o'clock service with all of our choirs participating as we praise God um, both for those who share their talents with us, for the gift of music itself, and for our Lord Jesus Christ who calls us together. Does anybody have any other announcements today? I think that may be it for this morning. Now let us worship God with our offering.
known to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread, as you were made known to the disciples, we see these gifts in the offering of our lives, that we may be your risen body in the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sins, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalena and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus gave thanks, took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gift of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us feast this Easter day on Christ, the bread of heaven. Hallelujah. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection that we may show your glory to all the world through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.